Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and after yesterday's colossal derp moment when I uploaded just the uh, raw gameplay footage of, <laughs> of what was supposed to be yesterday's video uh, and didn't realise until after I'd uploaded it and people were going, what's this, a five minute long Jingles video with no commentary? Oh no. Went ahead and re-uploaded uh, the correct video. Well, I didn't re-upload it, I never uploaded the first one, uh, the correct one in the first place. Uh, we're back to normal today, with the countdown to Gamescom, it's Wednesday, flying out of Germany for Gamescom tomorrow. Still planning to try to get some videos pre-uploaded and scheduled to tide you over until I get back on Sunday. But for now, we have a highly amusing World of Warships replay in the Dirtski. Although I'm pretty sure it's more popularly known as the Derpsky. This is the Soviet Tier 3 destroyer. Follows on from the Storozhevoy at Tier 2. And sailing it for us today is Dirty Filthy Scrublord. No, I'm not judging him. That's his name. <laughs> Fantastic. Before we get started though, I just want to draw your attention to that guy over there in the wicks. Now, he's pink. And it's not unusual to start a game of warships and see people on either team with the names in pink. It means they've caused team damage in previous games. And usually it's accidental or it's just down to carelessness or recklessness. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's quite deliberate. Watch this guy. There they go. He's firing his torpedoes at that 10 Ryu. That was quite deliberate. This guy's a dedicated team killer. Now, World of Warships is not like World of Tanks when it comes to team killers. If a guy turns blue in World of Tanks for friendly fire, then it's open season. He's no longer on the green team, he's not on the red team. He's on the blue team, and everybody can shoot tanks on the blue team with no penalties. This guy would, look at that, see how close those torpedoes came to hitting the South Carolina. If it wasn't for the short range on the torpedoes, he missed the 10 Ryu he was launching the torpedoes at. He was forced to take evasive action. He would have hit that South Carolina, no question about it, if not for the short range of the Wicks torpedoes. In World of Warships, it's not like World of Tanks. Once somebody turns pink, that doesn't mean you're free to start shooting at them. You can shoot at them, but you'll turn pink as well. The system's different in World of Warships. Once somebody's turned pink and done enough damage to friendly ships, then they lose the ability to actually inflict damage on friendly ships, and instead the damage is reflected back to them. I've seen people kill themselves once they've turned pink and continue to do team damage. I've seen them kill themselves by continuing to try to sink friendly ships. For now, however, we have another Wix-class destroyer, and this one is definitely on the enemy team, and we can definitely shoot at him. Now, the Dirtski only has three guns, and the range on the Dirtski's guns is actually less than the range of the Tier 2 destroyer, the Storage Avoid, but they do fire very, very quickly. Scrub Lord has been hit, he is on fire, but he's keeping up the shots, aided by the Tenryu that our little uh, team killer friend launched his torpedoes at, and just as the enemy wick smokes up, the final shot hits and knocks him out, but he did manage to get his torpedoes away. There's the Tenryu who didn't retaliate against the wicks, he's just been sunk by the way, by the enemy team. So first blood, the dirty filthy Scrub Lord, and we no longer have a team killer problem. Up ahead, enemy Chickama and South Carolina. Now the Chickama has lots and lots and lots of pretty good guns, as you can see. So, Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord has popped his own smoke screen, and he's keeping up the long range fire, because the range on these guns is not particularly good on the Chickama. He's managed to knock something out. Oh, the Chickama's engine is down. You can always tell when a ship's engine has been knocked out when you see flames coming from the smokestacks. So, start reducing the amount of lead, now he's on fire. Friendly torpedoes going ahead there. They're never going to hit the chicken. Not with his engines out, although he has managed to repair the engine and put the fire out. He's, he's weathering this damage pretty well. He's definitely not in torpedo range though. He, see, here's the thing about the Dirtski. A lot of people consider, oh, his engine's out again. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh well, and he's not going to be able to do anything about that, so his days are numbered. The Dirtski, however, a lot of people consider it a downgrade over the Tier 2, the Storage Avoid. We've already mentioned that it only has three guns, and they have less range than the Tier 2. It's also a bigger ship than the Tier 2. 
which means it's easier to hit, and it gets detected from further away than the Tier 2. The Dirtsky does have two things going for it, however. Oh, Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord's smoke screen is gone, he's been spotted, he's starting moving again. The chicken is done, however. And there's his second kill. So, what does the Dirtsky have down here at Tier 3, which makes it worth bothering going down the Soviet destroy line, particularly after the Storage Avoid at Tier 2? It's a bigger target, it's easier to hit, you can see it from further away. The guns are pretty bad, they have shorter range, it only has three of them. They do have a fast reload, however, but that's pretty much it. What the Dirtsky has over the Storage Avoid? Two things. It's fast, it has a top speed of 34 knots. This was the first Soviet, or technically Russian, destroyer to be fitted with turbine engines. So it's a fast ship. And it's also got the biggest torpedo broadside of anything at Tier 3. In fact, it's got the biggest torpedo broadside of anything at Tier 4. The torpedoes are suicide torpedoes. They have ridiculously short range. But it can put 10 of them over the side from multiple torpedo launchers, and they have a very fast reload. They're also very slow torpedoes. They only have a speed of 51 knots, but since they only have a range of 4 kilometers, and you're putting so many of them in the water at the same time, and the kind of targets that you're going to be hunting with these torpedoes are Tier 3 and 4 battleships, which are sluggish ships that don't have particularly good secondaries and their primary armament is very inaccurate. Which means that if you can get this thing close to an enemy battleship, or cruiser for that matter, at the kind of range where your torpedoes actually become effective, you've got a very, very good chance of scoring some torpedo hits and surviving the encounter. And that's basically what the dirt ski is all about. But don't worry, we're going to see that. Now, quick look at the overall tactical situation. Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord has two kills. He did some damage to that South Carolina as well, but he hasn't actually used his torpedoes yet. The enemy team control two of the three capture points. They're ahead on kills, and they're ahead on points. And they're going to stay ahead on points, because they've got two flags to our team's one. And we've just lost another ship. Not looking too good. The points difference is getting pretty comical at this stage. Our team has less than 200 points, the enemy team have over 450. But what's this we see over in the direction of the Bravo capture point in the slot, the narrow channel between the Solomon Islands here? Well, that's a Dresden-class cruiser. But there's also a South Carolina in that narrow channel, a slow, sluggish battleship in a tight channel between a bunch of islands with limited room to manoeuvre. And we're in a very, very fast destroyer, even more so because we've activated our engine boost. And there's the Dresden. Now, we're not spotted yet, and we can only see the Dresden because of the Wakataki, who he attempted to fire some torpedoes from the south up through the slot there, and then he's worked his way around further to the east. It's not looking too good for... The Ten Ryu up there. But here are the victims. Now, we've been spotted. So, smoke. Slow down. Watch the broadside of torpedoes from this ship. Remember, they only have a 4km range and they only do 51 knots. Fire coming in from the Dresden. He's firing blind. We are not spotted. That's a lot of torpedoes. <laughs> And since we're not spotted, well, it doesn't hurt to fire the guns. Maybe get a fire started, it's all bonus damage. South Carolina has to know that there's a destroyer here, but well, there's a destroyer in front of him as well, so his turning options are strictly limited. Only one hit. South Carolina actually did pretty well there. And he's got his guns pointing in this direction, but he's got nothing to shoot at. Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord is in a smoke screen. There's the Dresden. Look at how quickly those torpedoes reload. See, the South Carolina cannot turn. If he turns, he'll take the torpedoes, but he took one of them anyway. They were fired at him from the front, and he's not going to survive that. Is the Dresden going to survive this? He's not turning either, is he? <laughs> and we're spotted. So we can expect some fire from the Dresden. Uh, but he seems to be concentrating on the Wakataki. No, here it comes. 
Okay, that was nasty. We could have done without that, but yep. Yeah, kill number four. So, we're now even on kills at least, but the enemy team is still way ahead on points because they still control two of the flags. And we should probably expect to see the enemy ships that were down there capping A at the far southwestern end of the map very, very soon. Two enemy destroyers still in play. Uh, one of them over there, so we don't really need to worry about him. He's engaged in a fight with another friendly destroyer. The other one, no idea where he is. Second friendly destroyer backing us up here. Starting to push into Bravo and take it off the enemy. Good luck all around. Trying to make sure we don't get surprised. Because that would be bad when you have as little health as this. And oh, yeah. There's the 10 Ryu. And we've been spotted. And there's the second enemy destroyer. Okay, this is a total no-brainer. You have to kill the destroyer. Because you can kill him in one shot. And so that's exactly what he does. And there's his Kraken unleashed. He's still spotted, however because he's fired the guns, and the destroyer was only able to get one salvo of torpedoes away, easily able to avoid those, but he's taken fire from the Ten Ryu. Another friendly destroyer also pushing into the cap, so he's assisting in the capture here, but he's perilously low on health, and there's a second Ten Ryu coming up the slot from the south. Now, he's not spotted anymore, but if that Ten Ryu is paying the slightest bit of attention to the map, he has to know that all three of the remaining destroyers on Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord's team are right here in the capture point and oh great now there's a South Carolina as well. Well the good news is that both the Ten Ryu and the South Carolina are inside the range of Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord's hilariously slow torpedoes. The bad news is he only has 445 health and one hit from the Ten Ryu's guns is gonna kill him. So torpedoes away for the motherland and stand by to die. Why isn't the Ten Ryu shooting his guns? Why is the Ten Ryu sailing around in circles at three kilometers range from three destroyers and not using all of his guns at them? Oh wait, he finally realized that the guns are actually there for more than decorational purposes, but yeah, missed. He's trying to get his torpedoes away, while at the same time frantically trying to avoid all of the torpedoes fired by these three enemy destroyers, which of course means he's run himself aground, and now he's a complete sitting duck for all of the guns and torpedoes on these destroyers, which is incredibly bad news for the South Carolina behind him because now he still has to deal with three destroyers instead of two destroyers, which would have been bad enough, but he might have had a fighting chance if the Tenryu had just realized what his guns were for. And now, of course, with this lightning fast reload, Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord is free to put even more torpedoes in the water against the South Carolina. The South Carolina's secondaries were able to do what the Tenryu's primaries weren't, and finished Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord off, but there is no way he's going to avoid that many torpedoes at that kind of range. So, six kills for Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord to go with his first blood, Kraken Unleashed, and now the It's Just a Flesh Wound Award. But the drama doesn't end there. There's still one destroyer left on the enemy team. Can he possibly pull it back against all the odds and clinch a win for the enemy team? Possibly. I've seen people come back from worse odds than this and manage to win a game. And stranger things have happened at sea, but it's only really possible if you're actually at the keyboard. This guy's AFK. And that means Grox80 here is going to get the satisfaction of earning his second kill by torpedoing a stationary enemy destroyer. Sadly, no post-battle results screen associated with this replay, but I'm pretty confident that Dirty Filthy Scrub Lord probably made a profit. <laughs> Just based on the 12 torpedo hits alone, never mind the 77 gun hits, and this thing only has three guns. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'm off to Gamescom tomorrow. There will be a video up tomorrow, and I am desperately trying to make sure I can get some content uploaded for Friday and Saturday as well, just so you don't have to completely go without your daily dose of jingles before I get back from Gamescom on Sunday. That's it for today, folks. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.